where obviously when it came out at first originally you don't think like you don't you don't realize that it actually is like a In setup universe, for yeah. yeah until the end scene where Bruce Willis shows up yeah and you realize that oh it's David Dunn from Unbreakable oh yeah yeah it's it was really I I really wanted to see Split and then Jeff is just like let's just watch Blah Blah Land instead Blah La Blah Land and then. We ended up watching La La Land, and I fell asleep, and then I saw Split with my friend, and I'm like, this is the greatest movie ever. What are you talking about? Blah Blah Land won an award, didn't it? won we? awards. Ryan Barely. Gosling was amazing. Ryan Gosling saved jazz. But, I mean, going back to Glass, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's really interesting because it's kind of... There is this weird supernatural element to it because just, you know, with the with the Beast and David Dunn having kind of super strength and everything. But at the same time, it also kind of brings a real world similarity to it. It's just like in Unbreakable, uh, Samuel L. Jackson is a big comic book fan and he knew that he was better off as a villain. So he created a hero out of Bruce Willis's character, which was through so, a series of terrorist acts. Yeah. Through which, a series of terrorists, which is like super like effed up, but at yeah, the same part time, of his psychotic mentality from just being, you like, know, Mr. Just, Glass. <laughs> yeah. But when you think about it, it's just like that could happen. You know, I mean, there are people who are very much into the comic book universe and stuff. So they're in Seattle, the rain here, uh, the rain city superhero movement led by, uh, I think Phoenix Jones is still, up on it <laughs> really yeah it's a real life superhero dude just trying to act within the confines of the law to, to protect the people the cops give him a hard time it's like Aww. dude can you stop that that's pretty like that's pretty that's like great quality content honestly that's just that's a guy just trying to do i like that you know what good, good on you keep, I, keep doing your thing I, I i like him too he had his um yeah like I, at least five years ago he had his secret identity uh, revealed, which sucks. Turns out he's an MMA fighter in real life. Oh, yeah. well, that's not really fair then. It's like, <laughs> it'd be cool if, like, oh, he was just, like, an accountant. Well, he cha- he changes into his costume in the back of a co- comic book shop, so. But, yeah, uh, Glass, are you guys going to see it? I'm going to see it twice. I'll, pr- I'll probably have to look at the prequels first. It's worth it. It's it's definitely. Yeah, especially Unbreakable. Like, it's yeah. probably one of my favorite superhero movies. Dang. It's, it's, re- it's really good. Okay, I, right. I really like it a lot. I will add that to my to watch list. Um, and the last bit of trailer news: uh, Fantastic Beasts Two, Ooh. The Crimes of Grindelwald, was released in San Diego Comic Con as well. Kind of nostalgic moments for me as a big Harry Potter fan. So they had the um, the the Boggart, which was the closet that had like the everyone's different fears. They had the ridiculous charm. Um, and then they also revealed Nicholas Flamel at the end. So if you guys watched and read um, the very first Harry Potter book, Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone or Sorcerer's Stone, depending on where it was published, um, Nicholas Flamel was one of the owners of the Philosopher or Sorcerer's Stone. So that was the reason why he was immortal for so long. So it was kind of, it's really cool that they, they introduced that. So I was definitely kind of like, geeking out a bit when i was watching the trailer you had a similar reaction like when i did with god except i didn't make the sound (laughs) oh i was about to ask you for an impression (laughs) um but yeah i'm i'm definitely looking forward to that and it comes out close to my birthday so november 16th this sounds like a hint jeff oh yeah i've got the hint yes (laughs) um so uh, were there any other trailers that you guys saw that you guys it looked like it was you know not once i saw decent (laughs) Uh, I think that about covers it. You know, with San Diego Comic Con, there's a lot of TV and movie talk, but there's also a lot of comic book news as well. So I will leave it to the two comic book guys in my panel to chat about it. Lenny, do you want to start off with your news? Uh, yeah. So, uh, Monstrous, which is a series from uh, from Image, won five Eisners. Among uh, among one of the Eisners was Best Writer. This is the first time that a woman uh, took home the Best Writer thing. Her name is Sana Takeda or Marjorie Lou. Marjorie Lou. I'm sorry. Sana is the, um, the artist. But yeah, it's a pretty beautiful book. I should I should read it. Have you read it? <laughs> uh, no, I haven't. Um, but was she tied with Tom King or was it? Uh, okay, yes. I think for, she was tied with Tom King. Right? Yeah, she was yeah. tied with Con- Tom King for... Yeah. Because Mr. Miracle is honestly a miracle on the pages. <sighs> yeah, so, yeah, Monstrous. That was cool. Uh, new uh, Miracle Man is coming back. 
um, because until 2016, uh, Marvel was republishing this classic prequel, pre the thing that inspired Watchmen, also written by Alan Moore, so he inspired himself, but this series about Superman who becomes God uh, was stopped somewhere in the 80s, no, early 90s. Uh, for legal reasons and they started reprinting it until 2016 and then they stopped once they caught up with the reprints and neil wasn't writing in more stuff until now (laughs) read neil gaiman and mark buckingham depicting miracle man the silver age yeah that sounds pretty good yeah so that's coming back and i'm pretty hyped about it uh as for other news shuri number one shuri is getting her own series she's Yay! gonna rule wakanda for a little bit she's so for cool. five issues for five issues which can be anywhere from one to a million years in a single series she's so cool i'm actually i'm i think i'm gonna pick that one up for yeah. sure yeah I'm, I'm probably gonna like flip through it and then put it back Unless if I really like it, then I'll buy it. It looks interesting. I like Shuri. And uh, lastly, for uh, some of the news I wanted to talk about was, oh, that's Stroke versus Yogi Bear. Yeah, I saw that in the notes, and I'm just like, yeah, I'm just, I'm just going to wait till, till Lenny explains this. <laughs> there has to be some sort of reason why that's a thing. <laughs> it's, uh, you know, one of those things that DC randomly puts together, like Batman teams up with with elmer fudd with elmer fudd which turned into a really good uh, issue so <laughs> this one it's deathstroke versus yogi bear and according to the writers this is going to be ultra violent also they uh, they said that yogi's probably not going to die you see him on the cover of it he looks like a regular ass bear but attacking <laughs> attacking deathstroke that's so weird <laughs> i love it as a, as a concept it's so good and uh yeah so that happened and action comics wins a Guinness World Record for the longest running superhero comic ever. Woo! Congrats, guys. Yeah, but they're a little bit cheating because the definition, the first superhero arguably started with action comics. So they're going to have the longest running comic because they started it. Jeff, you had more news? Oh, I do, yes. Um, I'll I guess, start with uh, X Men. The big news, I guess, Uncanny X Men um, is returning finally in November. Uh, of course, no creative teams have been announced, uh, which I mean, those are my favorite kind of announcements. <laughs> Where we <laughs> get like a big, you know, fancy graphic saying Uncanny X Men, and everything else will be announced later. It's just a title, guys. Yeah, I'm so excited for that. Thank you. <laughs> um, of course, obviously, this happens with um, X Men Blue and X Men Gold being canceled in uh, September. And so a lot of people were saying, like, oh, you know, what's going to happen with, um, you know, X Men stuff? So clearly, this is what this is the direction they're going with, bringing back Uncanny X Men. Uh, in November, but before that, they're going to be um, starting uh, X Men Black, woo. which yes, exactly, woo, which is <laughs> which is going to be uh, I guess I think it's five um, one shots uh, focusing on the uh, villains. Yeah, so the five villains are going to be focusing on will be Magneto, Mojo, Mystique, Juggernaut, and Emma Frost, as well as there be a uh, backup story in each issue uh, focusing on Apocalypse. It sounded cool to me because Chris Claremont. Is coming back to do some Magneto. Yeah, he's doing the Magneto one, yeah. Yeah, it's kind of awkward with Chris Claremont because, like, with his exclusive deal with uh, Marvel, mm. like, they're kind of paying him to, like, not write. Obviously, he did the uh, wedding special, but he hasn't really worked much since then, and it's kind of unfortunate, but... <laughs> but as long as he, they're paying him Yeah, I know, he's getting nothing. paid well, so it's like, whatever. Moving past the X-Men stuff. Um, as well as, there's, there'll also be um, Scott Snyder announced that he's going to be teaming up with uh, Jock for a six-issue mini on um, The Batman Who Laughed. Um, I mean, I love that character. Uh, definitely a fan favorite from Metal. He looks really cool. Yeah, I know his yeah. design and everything. I, I really loved it, so I'm, I'm excited for that mini Do you guys want to know something cool? <laughs> I, I do. I, I actually moderated for a panel with Jock. What? Why didn't you tell when? me this? How? Because I didn't know that he was in the like he was in that. So, um, no, but yeah. So this was way back when I was still kind of in the broadcast journalism days, and this Sarah was when, did? yeah, this is when um, Wizard World like came out with Comic Con before Fan Expo did a March Comic Con. Uh. so because I think like they were starting off too, it was a lot easier for them to kind of just get more freelance type journalists to do panels so i actually did a panel with 
jock um so yeah was, that was actually pretty cool because it was the first panel i ever hosted um cool and then nothing else developed from wizard world because that was the last year <laughs> wizard world had a comic-con here so what's jock like he's really nice there yeah there was other people that who unfortunately their names are not like registering in my brain right now but yeah he was he was very nice and he was very um you know kind of humble and stuff so yeah i mean not a jerk at all he even set time after the panel to to chat with with his fans so that that's always that's always really cool for me when they actually take the time to go and talk to the people who are the reason why he's you know he's kind of like a big name in the comic book industry so yeah that was my fun fact Wow. Cool. Uh, Jeff, I, anything else left for the comic book news? Yeah, so Alassia has two quick things uh, involving Jeff Johns. Uh, first, he's uh, finally going to revisit that uh, Three Jokers story, which was that was mentioned in uh, the first issue of Rebirth. Yeah. Um, it's kind of weird, though, because apparently it's going to be part of the uh, Black Label. Which I thought was going to be, I thought all the Black Label stuff was going to be out of continuity. It seems like this is the right. only one that is in continuity. So they're kind of mixing it with like in continuity and not in continuity. Yeah, that's a little a good story. Yeah, I guess. But yeah, I mean that that story, and as well as he'll also be uh, returning to uh, Shazam, which of course he worked on in the New Fifty Two, which he's wanted to work on for like years, but he's been too busy being, you know, whatever his title was before, <laughs> and now he's. Whatever title he, he, he has now. now. <laughs> but he has more time. I'm so glad for him. Cool. So, um, you know, obviously with Comic-Con, there is a lot of things we were really happy that we saw. But there are also some stuff that we weren't happy that we didn't see. Um, did you guys have anything that you guys were kind of disappointed about that you guys didn't see that you guys wanted to? Yeah, I was very disappointed um, that I didn't see anything Venom related. Yeah. Uh, I know before San Diego Comic Con started, Venom was the number one thing I wanted to see. So obviously, the last trailer that we saw, we had that one shot of uh, where Eddie Brock actually turns into Venom at the end, and he does the whole you know "We are Venom" thing. And like, I mean, I was sold at that point. Um, but I just I wanted to see like a little more, just to kind of you know see where this plot's going. Um, and unfortunately, I guess they didn't. You know, they kept it as a uh, exclusive to uh, San Diego Comic Con. Um, Someone's got to have you know filmed with. Their phone. Yeah, somewhere. you'd think something would have like leaked out by now, but yeah. like I've seen like one picture of it, uh, of Venom, where he, I mean he looks really cool, mm-hmm. but like yeah, the full trailer hasn't leaked yet. But I think it's supposed to drop online, hopefully in the next like week or two. Let's hope. So we I don't can't have wait that long. No, I can't wait that long, please. Yeah, no, because I mean apparently like from reports of the trailer, apparently there was like a scene where like Venom bites the guy's head off. What? Uh, Yes, that's nice. the thing. <laughs> <Noise>. <laughs> well, Venom brutally kills people sometimes, so yeah, that's the well, thing. Well, he's definitely not your friendly neighborhood Spider-Man. <laughs> no. <laughs> he's your unfriendly neighborhood Venom. Yeah, uh, for me, it was the fact that there was no Wonder Woman footage that was kind of, like, not even, like, a picture or anything. I mean, we saw that one picture of um, Kristen Wiig as um, Barbara Minerva, um, but that was, like, a couple months ago. So we need more. I need I need more. You of, need more, specifically. Well, yeah, because Gal Gadot is my more wife. More of your girlfriend or your wife. My wife. She's so, fair enough. Yeah, we need we need more of that, and hopefully a better explanation of what Steve Trevor is doing alive in the eighties. This is fanny pack. Yeah, with the fanny pack, I hear those are coming back these days. They are, but now they're called cross body bags. <laughs> um, Lenny, anything that you were kind of sad that you didn't see, or you wanted to see more of in San Diego? Um, I was hoping for. Well, this is just for me personally as a Grant Morrison fanboy. Uh, I didn't see any panel from him. That's it. I just like it when he blows my mind <laughs> all the time. Hey, Grant Morrison, if you're uh, listening, comics and dancing. <laughs> please subscribe. And yeah. you don't have to blow anything of mine. All right. Well, that is it for us in our quick recap of San Diego Comic-Con. If you guys missed any of the trailers, I did my very best to collect as much of them as possible in our latest article. So be sure to check that out. And signing off from Comic Sync, this is Sorrel. And Len. Jeff. See you guys soon. Do you want to hear more from Comic Sync? Show us some love. Patreon.com slash Comic See you soon.